Moi, je n'ai jamais allé là-bas. Moi, je suis à côté de l'aéroport. Je vois plein de gens qui partent. Il n'y a même pas un pays qui est facile. Il suffit seulement d'être un gars compétent sur le terrain. Et si tu es compétent, le bon Dieu ne va pas te laisser. Quel que soit Alpha, tu vas avoir pour toi. En tout cas, moi, personnellement, je rêve d'aller aux États-Unis. Ça, c'est un rêve d'enfance. Et comme je suis optimiste, je sais que je vais aller. My name is uh, Mocha Lantum, the founder of the Baobab Cultural Center, located in Rochester. We uh, have been in operation for seven years. I've been in the United States and pretty much been based in Rochester, New York, for uh, over 15 years. I came here from Cameroon, uh, my uh, country of birth, and uh, my primary home, where my parents and family are, and um, came here uh, for school. After graduating from the University of Rochester, I, I worked for Kodak and then worked for Excellus Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Typically, if somebody was able to immigrate from their country here, they definitely had a system that supported them. They were able to afford a plane ticket. They were able to have somebody who advocated on their behalf, sign an affidavit of support for them to be able to get into a school or for them to come for professional reasons. There is that fabric. So you typically tend to find very educated folks very accomplished folks, very ambitious folks. I came to this country back in 1979 to pursue a postgraduate degree in uh, physics. After grad school, I ended up uh, in Eastman Kodak Company. I came to the state in 2003. I first started in Ithaca, New York. I started studying English at Cornell University. After that, I moved to a community college. I finished with an associate degree in computer science, another associate degree in business administration, and then I moved to RIT to finish a bachelor in management information system. So now I'm currently working for the city of Rochester as a technology application specialist. I was fortunate enough to have a brother <coughs> Who, who was a main provider, who stepped up the plate and made me who I am today. He paid my way to America, and then the sky was the limit. My study was mostly in computer. I was a full-time professor at MCC for three years, where I taught computer. I worked as a software engineer, and then in 2002, I created a company called BTA. I came to America when I was a little kid, you know, I came with my dad, I had no choice. He brought me here, me and my sisters and my brothers, and uh, basically I really, like I grew up here, because I've been here um, almost 21 years, man. En 1994, quand je, je finissais à, à l'université du Tchad euh, avec ma licence, j'avais l'ambition justement de venir aux états unis euh, continuer mes études, euh, mais euh, la situation financière n'était vraiment pas ça. 
un ami tchadien, musicien, qui vivait déjà aux États-Unis, et qui arrive au Tchad et me dit Oh, tiens, mais. Mais Thierry, mais tu es un bon batteur, mais vraiment, qu'est-ce que tu fais au chat Vraiment, tu n'as pas le droit d'être ici, quoi. Je dis, mais pourquoi bon, moi, moi, je vis ma vie ici, je suis tranquille, j'ai mon groupe, Tibesti, euh, c'est l'un des meilleurs groupes du Tchad. Bon, donc, et puis, j'ai décidé de mettre toute ma, mon énergie dedans. Donc, il n'y a pas de problème, non, je vis tranquille ici, quoi. Je me dis, euh, y a, je connais un moyen, un procédé, euh, une loterie. Bon, on, tu tentes ta chance. Je dis, moi, je ne crois pas à ces histoires-là, donc laisse. <rire> il a tellement insisté que finalement, je lui ai donné toutes les coordonnées de ma femme, de mes enfants et de moi-même. Un matin, on reçoit un mail comme quoi euh, ma femme a gagné à l'hôtel américaine. Quoi. People will do anything to come to America to get an American visa or to get American citizenship. You know, they will marry female with 10 kids with six baby daddies, you know, just to get a freaking green card, just to be here. People pay. People even pay. People pay thousands of money, you know, to, uh, for people to marry. Usually it don't work because whoever you pay for your citizenship to pretend like you are married, they start catching feelings. Now they want to sleep with you. <laughs> so it's tough, you know. You give this lady six thousand dollars, you know, Pretend like she's your wife so you can get your papers. Now she want a kiss. She got no front teeth. <laughs> they think every American has money. They think the streets in America are painted with gold. Like um, there's trees with branches of dollars. You just go and take a dollar off a tree or two hundred dollar bill or hundred dollar bill. People sacrifice everything they have to come to this country until they see reality face to face. You know, it's, I guess, the opportunity of, like, a, you know, being able to go to school, give a thumbs up for that, and um, get a job and make some money, so you got to do what you got to do. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell la il suffit pas d'aller travailler si tu es compétent sur le terrain voyez ce que je suis seulement Kuro Dankara tu vas avoir ce que tu vas avoir. Ceux qui partent là-bas, et quand ils, quand ils reviennent, tout ce qu'ils racontent des États-Unis, ce n'est que du bien. Alors que nous, on est ici, à partir du net, on, on sait que, non, que par rapport à, trucs, à la nourriture, à l'habillement, tout est cher là-bas. Ici, on ne peut pas attraper deux lièvres à la fois, mais là-bas, on peut attraper même jusqu'à trois lièvres à la fois. Quand j'étais en high school, j'ai travaillé pour les corner stores. You know, the Arabian corner stores, you know, stocking goods and stuff, making subs. Um, I have done it all. You have to understand, America is a country where everybody re gets reduced to the common denominator. Nobody is above the law. Nobody, everybody has to start from the grassroots and you have to, you got to pay your dues. So if you have a problem in paying your dues, in other words, you're going to take on certain jobs that you never thought you would do back in Africa. And you should look at it as a process. My first job I had was translation. Translation at the hospital to Cattle Family Center, um, the Justice Department of Justice sometimes. Yes, I did. Yeah. And then I work at the restaurants and assembly line. I washed dishes. I did everything even though I had a bachelor. Back home, can you think about somebody having a bachelor's degree in physics and doing dishes? It, it would never happen. <laughs> but here, you, I mean, I washed my students' dishes. They laughed at me. They made fun of me. So what? They didn't make it. It was fun after all. <laughs> What I thought about America was everything was easy. Like, you know, you come and money would come easy, everything, you know, and also the picture on, t on the TV, like, you know, everybody driving nice cars, 
big buildings everywhere, money everywhere. It's not like that, you know, especially when it comes into an academic environment. The moment you tell people, look, it's not all roses as you think it is. The first thing they ask you, well, why are you there? J'ai comme une comme l'impression en arrivant aux États-Unis que je devais tout recommencer à zéro, et que je recommençais ma vie à zéro dans tous les domaines, tu vois un peu. Il a fallu que nous, étant adultes déjà, qu'on essaye de voir dans quelle mesure on peut déjà apprendre la langue, l'améliorer. Pour les enfants, euh, ça toujours, c'est comme l'habitude, ça, ça va toujours très vite. Il a suffi que les premières semaines à l'école pour que <rire> <laughs> so, okay, so installed, quoi. Once you're in the system, you see it's hard to get a job, you know, visa issues, and you see stuff that you can do, but there's always some challenges to it. And that's something when you are abroad, you don't know. I had friends that were doctors back home and came here and, you know, they couldn't even figure out that the fact that, you know, you were a doctor back there, but now you have to take the you, you you have to go through the whole process here again. En fait, qu'on a pas ce système de travail la nuit. Je n'ai pas su au début ajuster un peu, équilibrer euh, les, les moments de repos et les moments où il faut aller au travail quoi. Est-ce que j'avais le choix Non, peut-être que j'avais pas le choix aussi parce que euh, je dis toujours en tant que nouveau aux États-Unis, je dois m'occuper de ma famille. Euh, je dois être très rapproché de ma famille parce qu'elles ont besoin de faire des courses et c'est par exemple dans la journée euh, ma femme, euh, mes enfants, s'ils ont besoin de se déplacer euh, ils ne savent pas encore conduire donc je dois, me, je dois les déplacer euh, c'est pour ça que ça devient difficile quoi, tu vois, okay? Là, on, regarde les, on regarde les fruits du pays ça, parce que c'est qu'on voit ici la hygiène et tout mais au pays il y a c'est frais quoi tu vois peu généralement les, les, à tout ce qui est vivre les gens amènent ça des, 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 des champs le matin quoi tu vois un peu c'est ça que je dis que c'est plus frais euh, par contre ici c'est des choses qui, ont, qui sont dans les cartons depuis des mois tu sais même pas <rire> c'est quoi le vegetable hein? c'est quoi le vegetable le vegetable oui ouais, j'ai parlé de euh... de légumes et des vegetables et je demande c'est quoi les vegetables c'est les légumes ouais, les on est déjà en train de mélanger le français à l'anglais. November is Black Catholic History Month. So one of the ways here at St. Monica's that we celebrated was to come together and have our community table where we're sharing dishes, from African dishes, Caribbean dishes, and soul food dishes. Many African immigrants are coming from very rich traditions, the Yorubais and, this, and people who speak Swahili. And so they have a third language which informs their consciousness, subconsciously, if you will, whereby they are able to tap into their local traditions and have a very strong sense of identity, a very strong sense of purpose, and it's different sense of pride. There are some who don't have that asset in terms of a clear understanding about their cultural heritage, even though they grew in their country, because even while in their country, they assimilated and accepted Western values as a golden standard. And so you have a spectrum of folks who tend to identify very strongly with their African ancestry and some who actually look for every way not to do that. J'ai toujours été rapproché de l'église catholique. Je pensais que aussi c'était intéressant de se rapprocher de l'église une fois arrivé ici à Rochester. Et comme je suis musicien, j'ai forcément intégré la chorale de l'église comme je l'ai toujours fait même en Afrique, au Tchad.
Christianity um, is a very important thing to me. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, being comfortable with my accent. Has that, that's important. We do have accent, but we try to communicate. We try to make friends. We try to chill. We try to have fun, you know? Yeah, I have tried to lose my accent and everything. May I, um, but sometimes it doesn't work out well because, um, I mean, I would do it for a few minutes and then my African accent will kick right back in, even thicker, <laughs> you know? So you end up, at the end of the day, you're going to give it up. Yeah, you know, just be you. Sometimes they be like, what did you say? You gotta try to repeat yourself, you know, clearly and try to communicate slowly. In the class, outside, you're playing with your friends, when you're trying to be friendly to a little girl, whatever, I mean, accents is like a curse that is always gonna be with you. And this kid is here, when you're younger, here in America, they think it's like a, something they can use against you. <laughs> it's really kind of tough. Like you would say something, they will make it into a song. You know, the way you say. Arrivé ici déjà automatiquement, j'ai cette question en tête. Où se trouve l'Afrique ici, quoi? Yeah, I've heard about Kwanzaa. Yeah, Kwanzaa, but I'm not familiar with it. Because I understand, or you know, I might be wrong, but I understand that it was created by sociologists from here that went to Africa, East Africa particularly, and put that, put that together. Kwanzaa is um, something African Americans made up, to be honest with you. Um, and I heard people asking me about Kwanzaa especially when white people come up to me and ask me at a job. I used to work with a lot of white people. They'll come to you and ask you, um, so what's up Kwanzaa? Tell us about Kwanzaa. I mean, they'll take that opportunity, that chance to target to you. Because when they say real African, they'll be like, okay, we got our luck. <laughs> they will take that opportunity to ask a real African, what is Kwanzaa all about? And we the real Africans, we don't know nothing about Kwanzaa. Go to Africa and ask any African out there in the village, what's the deal with Kwanzaa? They're going to think you're calling them some kind of names. They might chase you with a spear. We have the seven candles, the Mishima Saba. Saba meaning seven. So I reckon Mishima means candles. Okay. And notice the pattern. Black, red, green. Also symbolic. Black representing the people. But oh, there's been all kinds of uh, designation of who we be, we people of African descent. But when we talk about black, it's the noble, nobility of blackness. So black represents the people. And the people have to struggle, and therefore red symbolizes struggle. All right? Mm -mm -mm. Struggle. The people struggle. And from the struggle, there is always the essence of hope. Children, children, life, life, children. qu'il y a une certaine bonne gouvernance quand même ici et qu'en Afrique les choses bon, semblent parfois s'empirer. Nous avons beaucoup de choses à faire en Afrique pour pouvoir aider ce continent à sortir. Quoi. They have Where over them. Cooper Vision? Cooper Vision, yeah. You told them I'm done? Oh, yeah, I told them. Uh, Quit or uh, you give them two weeks notice? Yeah, I give them, I give them one month notice. One month. 
So, Good. Yeah, right. No, this last year, yesterday was like, uh, you know, emotional. <laughs> emotional day for yeah, you, right? Eh? Emotional day this morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. They don't want you to leave. They don't want you to leave. Yeah, they okay. like African people. Yeah. And they are work, hard workers, you know. Yeah, you know where we come from. Exactly. Yeah. Do you think he's crazy to go back to school? He just quit his job. Yeah, it's a good idea. He finishes very quick, and he will do what he wanna do. You know? Skill is a good, the good thing to take in this country. Service will stay in America forever. Yeah. Especially for us. Joe. Les gens ont passé des années à bosser pour leur pays. Qu'est-ce que toi tu viens faire ici Venir profiter de tout ça hein? Tant que je vis là, je dois être utile. Quoi, tu vois un peu, non? Et puis je dois marquer mon passage sur la terre. Tu vois un peu. Là où je vis, tu vois, il faut que les gens sentent qu'ils ont besoin de moi. Quoi, tu vois un peu. Mais au stade, euh, ce n'est pas que je ne peux pas atteindre. Mais je pense qu'ils ont beaucoup fait. Tu vois un peu, non? Ils, ont, ils sont allés très loin. Et là où on a plus besoin de nous actuellement, c'est dans nos pays. Aussitôt je suis arrivé, je me suis dit, oh tiens, ça c'est le coin où je dois prendre ce, qui ce, qui, ce dont j'ai besoin et puis repartir, quoi, tu vois un peu. <rire> voilà, c'est un peu ça, quoi, tu vois un peu. So, uh, you are not here to, you know, to play and, uh, you know exactly what you want here. You know? We want peace. We want, we want peace. We want joy. We want joy. We want success. We want success. We want success. We cheer to that. We, we cheer, cheer to that. that. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We look for opportunity to make sure that you know we are building Rochester because that's where we live. We pay taxes. Our families uh, enjoy the social assets. So we must contribute positively to the society. At the same time, we have our folks back home. We have people who invested in us before we came here, and so we owe them a certain amount of support. I, and, and that's what we seek to achieve. I, I only had the opportunity to come out, then I had to give opportunity for the rest to come over here. Okay? And I'm going to bring more. The person said, a chair is a chair even no one is sitting there, but a home is not a home if no one is there. So my we have a house there, but it's just my cousins that's there. When I go down right now, the feeling that of being home when my mother was there is no more there. And that's what makes it very, very uncomfortable for me to go back and say, I'm going to go live there. If I could make even one tenth of what I'm making here, Live in Africa, I will do so. I will go back, yes. But I'm planning because I'm planning to open a school because, like I said, it is up to her to go and change our country, to create opportunities for our own people.